Hi everyone, welcome to What You Reading, where youth services librarians around DeKalb County talk about the books that we are reading during quarantine. My name is Fran and I'm from the North Lake Library. Hi, my name is Mia and I'm from the Decatur Library. Hi, my name is Angela and I'm from the County Lion Yellowwood Library. And I'm Nicole, I'm from the Harriston Crossing Library. And this time we are talking about books that make us hungry. I don't know if you have experienced this. A lot of times I sit down and I read a book that seems completely innocuous and they keep talking about a specific food and I really, really want it. So we're talking about a few of our favorites in which food feature heavily and the food that you're gonna wanna have beside you while you are reading this book. Um, this is one of my favorites. I'm sort of surprised that I have not talked about it yet. Any of you who've like looked at my bookshelf back here, uh, my Sandy, my shirt at this moment, know that this is a book that I stand super hard and I love it. Um, this is carried on by Rainbow Rowell. Um, if you've read this one, this is now a series. Books one and two are out. Book three is coming out, I believe, at the end of this year or next? I'm a bad fan. I should know the answer to that. Um, but basically, it's a book about a chosen one story. This is Simon Snow. Um, he's the worst chosen one in history. He, uh, he's terrible at magic. Even though he goes to a magic school, he can't control his magic. He just, you know, it tends to explode. Um, so it's sort of about him coming into his own, his relationship with his roommate, Baz. They are enemies, or are they? Um, and a plot to take over the magic world um, by something called the Insidious Humdrum. All of that said, this book is also about food. Simon is hungry all the time to fuel that amount of magic. He's putting food into his mouth always. Um, it mentions food a lot, but the thing that it mentions the most is sour cherry scones. Those are the things that you're going to want to have with you definitely when you read this book. I don't know if they sound interesting or not. After this book, they will sound very interesting. I've made them quite a bit. Um, you can see I've taken some little Insta-worthy <laughs> pictures of them there. I've tried a few different recipes, and there's one that I really, really love. It's the America's Test Kitchen recipe. It's more like flaky, like a biscuit. It's not just stone hard like a lot of scones are. So I really recommend it. I will post the recipe to that down below in case you are interested in making that. This one does currently have a weight on it on overdrive. We are not sure when we are going to reopen at this point, but we hope to be open for curbside pickup in the near future. So if you wanted to put it on hold, physically um, to be waiting for you when that happens, that is an option. That one's also a great, I did the audio for that one and I loved it. The audio and is so, so good. It's, I think the best audio book I've ever read, but I am biased. Like, <laughs> as you can see, I am a biased person, but it's amazing. I, I don't know if people notice that in the picture, the carry-on cover that is in that picture and the one you held up are different because Fran has multiple copies of this book. I do. This is a um, jacket that came when you pre-ordered the second book because the design of the second book doesn't match the first. So they gave you a jacket to slip over. If you check it out, you may see this cover. So the book I have is called Sweet Cute. It's by Emma Lord. It also, um, we asked for it to be put on overdrive. The good news is it is. The bad news is that there's a pretty long wait. So again, hopefully we'll be um, opening soon for curbside. So if you wanna put it on the physical list, you can do that too, because that might actually be quicker. Um, Fran actually recommended this one and it was amazing. It, um, it looks like it's about like tweeting, which it is, but it is mainly about food. The, it's about Pepper and Jack and it's told from both of their viewpoints. And Jack owns a debt family owns a deli and she um, Pepper's family owns a fast food burger chain and they get into a competition over a grilled cheese sandwich. So I suggest making a grilled cheese sandwich because they talk about grilled cheese like the whole time. Um, I actually wished I could go to the deli if it existed and ordered one. It's called Grandma's Grilled Cheese Sandwich and sounded amazing. And then Pepper also bakes a lot. So she is always coming up with these amazing baked goods. So you might also want in hand um, some baked goods. Um, it's so cute, it's a real fast read. Um, they're very clever. It mentions Mean Girls a lot. So if you've ever seen the Mean Girls movie and you like Mean Girls, you will love this book. 
That sounds really cool. I can't wait to read that. So when I finish the one I'm doing, I'll, I'll go to that one next. So I'm doing um, With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Escovedo. And it, it was recommended to me by Fran. And I'm so glad she recommended this book because I was reading another book. It had food in it. But this, this is food. Mm -hmm. um, but it's about this teenage girl. Um, she is a, a teen mom and she's trying to raise her, her daughter, work a job and finish school. And she's in school and they, they start, she loves to cook. And when she cooks, that's her relaxed time. That's a time where she can breathe. She's super good at it. And, um, you know, this, it, it, it opens up the very first page. It opens up with a recipe. So, um, but it has three parts and each part has a different recipe in it. But um, I'm not sure if there's a particular specific food you want next to you when you're reading this book, but you do want Spanish cuisine in your life when you're reading this book because she mentions tons of different Spanish recipes and um, this Spanish influence and flavor throughout the entire book. And when they start a culinary immersion program at her school, she takes part of that. And one of the things her best friend, she cooked for her best friend, I think in like the second or third chapter was this uh, chicken stew, but in Spanish it's like pollo, I can't pronounce it, I apologize. It, you know, mouth watering. It was so good. So that, she's got a recipe in there just for like a strawberry milkshake, but it uses Caribbean vanilla. And so I just, I'm going to the store to get the <laughs> ingredients just so I can make that milkshake. So, um, yeah, so I would recommend this, but it's about her, you know, kind of coming of age, her, the struggles of that, that teen mom, that experience and her wanting to, um, to go to culinary school and to just, you know, make something of herself in the, in that thing. But the food thing, yeah, it, it is, it makes your mouth water reading this book. So I would, I would definitely recommend it, but like I said, you need something of that cuisine near you. Yeah. So, or the second you finish, you need to just go and just be like, okay, I'm fiending for, <laughs> you know, so, but yeah. So I'm in the middle of it now. It is really great. And I'm so glad that it was recommended to me. And I would recommend it to everybody within the sound of my voice. Please read with the fire on high. And that it one's is a, and there's a wait list on Overdrive, but it is on Hoopla. And there's um, that one's a Peach nominee this year. So if you read it and you enjoy it, go to georgiapeachaward.org and place your vote for it. It's also on Project Lit from last year. Nice! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So I am rounding us out. And I just want to preface this with food is my life. I am marrying a professional chef. So like... I love food, <laughs> um, but I read, it's called Salty, Bitter, Sweet by Myra Cuevas, and this book, I wanted to make, I wanted, well, I wanted him, but I wanted to bake everything, and I wanted him to make everything in this book. It's about a 17-year-old girl named Isla, and she gets into this, like, very competitive um, French culinary internship where whoever like is on top gets to work in a like, I think it's a three star Michelin kitchen at the end of it. And it's kind of like her coming to terms with her dream and it may not be everything she thought it was. Um, and there's of course romance in it. And I listened to it on audiobook. Uh, it's available as an ebook and an e-audiobook on Overdrive. And the food you're gonna want the entire time you're reading this. I didn't even know it existed, and I'm going to totally and completely bake it, but it is called a paper bag apple pie, and it's apparently the greatest apple pie in the world, and so I got my recipe from kingarthurflower.com, so I'll have, um, or I'll, I'll let, Fran, I'll send it to Fran, and she'll post it below. But yeah, so when you read this or listen to it, you're going to want a slice of apple pie the whole time. It sounds good. It sounds I good. I'm like, I need to go to the grocery store. <laughs> I know. I've got to make a list. Before we recorded this video, I was going to say, 
Okay. Um, I hope we gave you some great ideas for your lunches and dinners, as well as some ideas of books to read. Um, please comment if there's any other subjects that you'd like us to cover, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Bye. Bye.